your answers, though you might not like them. The universe began 13.7 billion years ago as a singularity of infinite density and temperature. It will expand and fragment until the fragments become singularities of their own and repeat the process. The grand unified theory is a lot closer to its turtles all the way down than scientists guess. The Earth will end with a bang, and not a whimper. Life is common in the universe, but intelligent life is not. What little of it exists uses neither radio nor space travel. No feral simian or missing link has ever been photographed. The creature in Loch Ness was a plesiosaur, but it died in 1976, and locals concealed the carcass. The Mayas died of a pandemic hemorrhagic fever. Atlantis was the island of Crete. No dead person has ever communicated with a living one. Ghosts are not the spirits of the dead, but cross-consciousness memories to which sensitive minds have non-chronological access. A tiny percentage of people have this ability. You do. Slightly. Lizzie Borden did it. Her sister knew. George Jaffe, a Jewish immigrant tailor living in London's East End, performed the killings ascribed to Jack the Ripper before lapsing into gibbering mental incompetence and dying of syphilis. Bruno Hauptmann did not kidnap Charles Lindbergh Jr. alone, but his accomplice had long since died when he went to trial. Arthur Lee Allen was the Zodiac. Amelia Earhart and Fred Noonan lived for four days on Gardner Island after ditching their plane there eventually dying of thirst and exposure. Marilyn Monroe died of an accidental reaction between medications prescribed by two different doctors. D.B. Cooper's skull lies beneath seven feet of loam and leaves in a bear cave in the Cascades with $140,000 of ransom money. President Kennedy was shot non-fatally by Lee Harvey Oswald, then killed accidentally by a Secret Service agent. Flushed with adrenaline, he slipped off the curb while rushing toward the limousine with his weapon drawn. Because Oswald fired the initiating shot, the FBI, CIA, and Treasury Department felt justified in leading all investigations to him. Half a million years ago, one of your ancestors invented the spoon. You had a relative that fought at Actium. Your great-great-grandmother shook Abraham Lincoln's hand. 
and reported it clammy. Your grandfather remembered a chocolate bar given to him by a pretty French girl in Paris as the best he ever tasted. Your parents did indeed meet at church, but only after your father locked the Sunday school room and charged your mother a kiss to escape. Your father wanted to be an architect, but he worried he couldn't support his family, so he became a mill worker. Your mother couldn't face staying at home after working during the war, so she talked him into starting his own mill and helped him run it. Your father drew houses on napkins for the rest of his life. Teresa never wanted to be your big sister. She resented your parents for making her raise you while they worked. Once while babysitting, she tearfully prayed that you'd just die. She felt bad about that for many years. Buddy forgave you for yanking his tail that time at the lake. A boy named Damon Phillips stole your bicycle in the fourth grade. But he took better care of it. The angry old man living across the street wasn't a Nazi, but a Jewish concentration camp survivor. He did poison Pippi for sniffing around in his garden, though. Heather Duncan would certainly have gone with you to the ninth grade dance. That gangly hick with the bad mustache who spit tobacco on you at the pep rally is on death row. Your father wanted you to be a reporter. It was a career to which you were suited, as well as attorney or teacher. Teresa would have made an excellent teacher. If you had not been wounded at Van Thuong in August of 1965, you would have died at Yao Drang in November. Over the course of your career in homicide, your work resulted in the arrests of 620 people. 254 were guilty, but exonerated. 96 were innocent, but convicted anyway. Of those, 44 were guilty of other crimes. Only 31% served their entire terms in prison. Of those released, more than half killed again. Jacques Herman did not kill those girls. You were right that Vernon Jean Johnson hid Sandy Berenson within view of the nursery window. Her body lay floating about 300 yards away in an old septic tank, and finding it would have cinched the case. Gary Thornton still wants to eat you. You arrested more black men than any other race or gender. Two people vowed to kill you over the course of your life. 
Neither could have done it. Francis Shank's daughter was a terrible shot. Gavin Drummond forgot about it after the third grade. Your daughter loved it when you would spook her watching episodes of In Search Of together in the basement. Sharon's parents never liked you as much as they did her last boyfriend. They took them both to dinner when you divorced. She's happy, but she does not regret marrying you. Sometimes she misses those late summer naps, those midnight trips to Krispy Kreme. No one could ever love you enough. But Jennifer Harris came closest. She still thinks of you and your kiss beneath the pier on prom night. Your greatest strength is your desire to ask all the big questions. Your greatest weakness is your fear of asking the little ones. Ah, there you are. Teresa's body lies face down near the 165 mile marker on Interstate 95 in South Carolina. Her murderer, a councilman from nearby Florence, chuckles every time he drives his Cadillac Escalade by that spot. His only motive was convenience, and there was no way to catch him. Nothing you've done would disappoint her. Your answers, though you might not like them. We, who are all just pilgrims, travelers through time. Answers we may not want to 